is, he got to take mama's spot today. Amen. <laughs> Put it in God's hands, amen. Uh-huh, amen. very funny. Her mom went out of town this weekend, and she went out of town yesterday, so both of them had me kind of, I ain't going to say discombobulated, but dad was at home all by herself yesterday. <laughs> you know, I just thank God that she made it back safely. Her mom amen. is on the way back now, and amen. everything can get back in order, amen. 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 So, we're not going to prolong the time. We're looking at Psalms 150. Good to see some faces I don't know. I'm always glad to see the faces I do know. Amen. It's good to see faces I don't know, so that means there's some more people I can get to know. Amen. Amen. Psalms 150. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. Psalms 150. Verses 1 through 6 have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say hold on a minute. All right. That means I ain't got to tell my story then. I've been down here a couple times, I ain't had to tell a little more than my story yet. I had to lie and preach it. Preacher stood up and Reverend said, everybody got it? He said, I got it, and he was still flipping pages. <laughs> that means you don't have it. Amen. I tell the truth, either you got it or you don't. Amen. 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 Psalm 150, <laughs> beginning with verse 1. And it reads, Praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psalter and harp. Praise him with the tremble and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath Praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you once again for this great opportunity to stand before this your people. Amen. And as always, oh God, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear, see, hear and see you, that you will get the honor, the glory, and the praises out of everything that is done here. Right. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you will just give us receptive hearts and minds yes. to be hearers of your word and not yes. only be hearers, but be doers as well. Amen. Father God, we pray that this word will go out and accomplish that which you sent it out to accomplish, and it will not return void. Mm -hmm. Bless us right now, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 We want to talk to you for a little while from the subject, praise is what I do. Oh, yeah. Praise is what I do. And when we look at Psalms 150, we must understand and know that Psalms 150 is a mandate to praise God. Mm -hmm. It lets us know that we should praise God everywhere we go. Amen. And we should not be ashamed to praise Amen. God everywhere we go. Amen. I find it it's so ironic to me that people have a problem with praising God. Amen. You have to pump folks. You got to prime folks. You got to remind people. You got to do all kinds of flips and turns just to get folks to praise God. Mm -hmm. But I tell folks, if you got to do a whole lot of pumping and priming, there's a problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if you got the pump and prime people to praise God and they know that God has been good to them, they right. know that God has done something for them, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and there's a problem somewhere. Oh, yeah. I thank God that nobody has to pump me and prime me and remind me oh, yeah. of what God has done for me. You don't have to pump and prime and get me to praise God. It doesn't matter where I am. If I feel like praising him, I'm going to praise him. Yeah. Because I know how good he's been to me. I know that he brought me from a mighty long way. I know how many times deep that he's healed my body and brought me out of so much stuff. Yeah. So if you got the pump and pride, that's a problem. Every morning you get up, that's another opportunity to praise God. Every time you're able to wave your hand, that's an opportunity to praise God. Amen. Because there's some people that can't get out of bed this morning. Yeah. There's some people that can't wave their hands this morning. Yeah. There's some folk that don't have food to eat on their table today. Yeah. We got up and we had food to eat. Now whether you ate this morning or not, that was on you. Yeah. But the food was there for you to eat. Yeah. That's a blessing. Boy. Whether you rode in a car with somebody else or you got your own car, it's still a blessing. Oh, yeah. That's enough to praise God yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Because that's some folk that are walking to them. Yeah. They're trying to get to where they got to go. Oh, yeah. There's some folk that are taking Uber and Lyft. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. That's
That's something to praise God for. Amen. Last night you slept in a warm bed. Amen. You didn't sleep out in that cool weather. You yeah. didn't sleep out in all that rain. Yeah. You had a warm bed with a nice soft pillow. Yeah. That's God right there. Yeah. Yeah. Blessing you. Amen. So that's enough to praise God for. Amen. You said, brother, that's just trivial stuff. Mm. That's, that's stuff that we're supposed to have. Mm. But you got to understand. God doesn't owe you anything. Yeah. You right. owe God everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Bible says in Psalm 150, that last verse said, let everything, yeah, right. everything, everything. That means the bug, yeah. the bird, yeah. the tree, yeah. the grass. That means everything. Uh, everything that has breath ought to do what? Praise you, oh, the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Because he made us. Oh, yeah. The Bible says, I'm fearfully in. Wonderfully made. Yes. Oh, yeah. Took me a long time to get to the point where I can laugh at folk when they talk about it. <laughs> you know, you might not like the way I look, but that's fine. Yeah. The Bible told me I'm made in his image. Yeah. So since I'm made in his image, I'm still good looking. Yeah. No matter how you feel about me. Yeah. Yeah. Pray to what I do. Oh, yeah. Some people don't understand the importance of praise. Right. Can I share with you what the importance of praise is all about? Right. It is important to praise God because when you start praising God, stuff starts happening. Amen. The atmosphere around you starts changing. Yes. Things start to looking a little bit better every time you give God praise. Right. And I don't know about nobody else, but the more I call on Jesus, the better I feel. Yeah. No matter what I'm dealing with, no matter how I'm feeling, the more I say that name, Jesus, the better I tend to feel. Boy. Why? Because I know that name has power. Yeah. Somebody didn't hear what I said. There's yeah. power in the name of Jesus. Boy. I don't care Boy. what sickness, I don't care what problem, I don't care what issue, I don't care what trouble, there's power in the name of Jesus. Boy. Boy. That name. Yeah. That's above every name. Boy. My name does not mean anything. Amen. I tell folks, for a long time, I really didn't like my first name. <laughs> just, just being honest. I didn't like my first name. I felt like Michael was just too common. Mm -hmm. I ran into so many folk with the name Michael. I'm like, man, this name, I just don't like this name. It's too common. Everybody got it. And, and to me, it just didn't mean nothing. I didn't like it. But then I start doing some research. Right. And I found out who Michael really was. Yeah. That Michael was an angel. Mm -hmm. And when I found out the story about Michael, it made me take pride in the fact of what my first name was. Yeah. Yeah. Your first name means something. Boy, yeah. Your first name is something that you can thank God for that your parents had enough sense mm -hmm. to name you Michael. Boy. And for that, I thank God. Yeah. That sometimes, we don't acknowledge the small thing right. in our life right. that God blesses us with. Mm -hmm. You say, Reverend, well, what do you mean? You know, you got to thank God that you got lungs mm -hmm. to breathe. Yes. There's some folks that are having trouble breathing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I want everybody in this room to do something for them. Mm -hmm. Inhale and exhale. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing yeah. Yeah. that you oh, can yeah. breathe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That you are able to breathe God's air. Yeah. You didn't have to do nothing to get this air. You didn't have to die for this air. You didn't have to pay for this air. God gave it to you freely. All you got to do is breathe in and breathe out. Boy, yeah. That's enough to praise God for. Yeah. Boy, yeah. Your praise is your weapon. Yeah. You say, well, Reverend, I, I don't know what you mean by that. But see, we're in what you call a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And the devil is always on the attack. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't, I don't know what he's doing in your life. Because mm -hmm. I'm not there every day. I don't know what's going on. But I know how he is where I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's on the attack every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing I understand about the devil, the devil is always on his job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The problem with us as Christians, we're not always on our job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the devil is always doing just what he's supposed to do. Oh, yeah. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And he will do it if you allow him to do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The problem is we give the devil way too much faith. Oh, yeah.
We give him too much control. The devil made me do it. The devil made me say it. The devil made me act like that. No, ma'am, no, sir. You have a choice yeah. in the matter. Yeah. All the devil does is present it to you. Yeah. You make the choice. Right. Mm -hmm. When you go to a restaurant, they give you a what? A menu. And on that menu, you got what? Choices. No matter how many combo meals they got, you got a choice of what side items you want. You got choices of what main course you want. You got a choice of what you want to drink. It's your decision. You build your meal. Now the outcome of the meal ain't got nothing to do with you. Don't say nothing, D. Don't say nothing. The outcome of the meal ain't got nothing to do with you. But the choices are yours. Boy. You say, well, Reverend, what do you mean the outcome ain't got nothing to do with me? Well, the devil presents the choices to you. Mm -hmm. You make the choice, but you didn't predict the outcome. Mm -hmm. The devil already know exactly, exactly. what's going to happen. Boy. 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 That's, I know. That's like I tell kids all the time. The devil is not your friend. Amen. The folk that you think are your friend are not your friend. Oh, yeah. My grandmama used to always tell me you got so-called friends. Oh, yeah. So one thing I learned about the devil is the devil will take you as far as you're willing to allow him to take you. Oh, yeah. But when you get to the destination, he drops you off yeah. and leaves you there. Yeah. So I'm trying to get you to understand that if you make better choices, you got a good reason to praise God. Oh, yeah. But the choices that you make, you said, Reverend, how is praise my weapon? Mm -hmm. Because when I'm going through stuff, I found out if I just take the time to just start praising God. Amen. And whatever I'm dealing with, it seems like it's not even a big issue anymore. Right. My, my pastor told us one time to try something every day. He said, take time every hour on the hour and just start thanking God mm -hmm. for everything he's done. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, wait a minute, I ain't, I ain't got that much time in the day, Reverend. You know, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to work and work. Now I'm trying I got to go home and I got to work there too. And I got, I ain't really got time. He said, just make the time. Boy. Every hour on the hour. Just to tell God, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I got to work and I started just thanking God. I looked around and I said, Lord, I thank you I got a job. Amen. I may have some problems on this job, but I just, I'm thankful that I got a job. Yes. Right. I said, Lord, I'm thankful for life, health, and strength. Father. Yeah. I, I'm thankful that I had a way to get to work. I, I'm thankful that, that we got food on our table and cold and halfway through it, I almost forgot where I was because I started praising God right, right there at work. It didn't matter if the camera was on. It didn't matter who was walking around. The fact of the matter is me and God we had our whole thing going on. Amen. I started taking oh, yeah. time to praise. Yeah. And I said, Lord, you know what? The problems on this job don't mean that much. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you think that your problems are so big, you take your problems to a God that's bigger than any problem that you could ever have. He can solve them all. Right. The biggest problem is we're so bad with telling our problems, telling God how big our problems are, instead of telling our problems how big our God is. Right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When I think about the story of David, yeah. David Goliath, David didn't worry about the size of Goliath. <clears throat> now the children of Israel were scared of him because of his size yeah. and his stature. And the problem with us, we are scared of stuff because of the size and the stature. Yeah. Some of us, we're scared of high blood pressure because of the effects of high blood pressure. Yeah. We're scared of sugar diabetes because of the effects of sugar diabetes. Yeah. But the thing about David, David didn't let Goliath's yeah. size Scare him. Mm. The king was like, man, are you for real? Mm. You want to go out and fight him by yourself? David said, I'm not by myself. <laughs> Can I just paraphrase for a little bit? David said, I'm not by myself. Amen. The God that I serve is going to go out with me. He's going to fight for me. Yeah. So, 
Saul tried to get him to use everything. The king was like, here, I want you to take this and put my arm on it. And David said, no, 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 I don't need none of that. I got everything I need. As long as I got Jesus, I got everything I need. I don't need all that stuff you got. David went on down by the brook, got them smooth stones, that sling shot he had. David walked on out on the battlefield. Yeah. Now, one thing I need you to understand, you still got to go to the battlefield. Yeah. Amen. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care how bad work is. You still got to show up till you get another job. Amen. I don't know. Well, Reverend told me to quit. No, I didn't tell you to quit your job. You still got to go Amen. until God opens up the door for another. Amen. And see, the problem is we don't appreciate what God has already done. Amen. Go to the bad job. Thank God for it anyhow till God opens up the door for something else. And when he opens up the door for something else, Praise him for bringing you from that bad job to the good job yeah. and keep on praising him some more. Yeah. 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 David got out there. He showed up, a little old Diddy fella. Yeah. Showed up in front of Goliath. Goliath said, This is y'all, this is what y'all got for me. <laughs> this is the best you sit out here up against me. He said, You come out here with a stick in your hand? He said, What do you think I am? David looked at him. He said, yeah, you might be beat, but the God I serve is much bigger than me. David put that stone in that slingshot. Goliath sitting there laughing at him. David swung around one time, and that rock hit Goliath in his forehead and killed him. Yeah. You say, what, what are you trying to tell me, Reverend? I'm saying all that to say this here. God is bigger than any problem that I'm dealing with. Oh, yeah. And if I follow the plan of God, God will take care of whatever problem that I'm facing. Oh, yeah. They may be talking about me. Let them talk. They yeah. might be laughing at you. Let them laugh. Oh, yeah. But in the midst of all that, keep on praising God. Oh, yeah. I promise you, God will fix that situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I promise you, God will open a door for you. Yeah. You said, Rev, you just don't understand. I've been through so much. Yeah, I've been through a lot too. Yeah. But the fact that I'm, I'm still standing. Why? Because of God's grace, because of his mercy, I'm still standing. And because I'm still standing, that's another opportunity to praise God. That's another opportunity to give God all of the glory that's due to his name. Praise is an everyday assignment. Why? Because every morning you open your eyes. You Thank ought to you. pray in God. Amen. Amen. Every night you get ready to go to bed, Thank you Amen. ought to be praising God. Amen. 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 People understand it's a struggle to get out of the bed. I thank God for the struggle. Yeah. Amen. Why? Because Amen. I'm alive to struggle to get out of bed. Amen. I'm alive to try to put one foot in front of the other. It Amen. might be hurting a little bit, but I thank God that I'm yet alive to keep moving. Amen. Amen. Psalms 100. Mm -hmm. You look at Psalms 100. Right off the bat, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Yes. Right. You know, I, I, we used to say this back home. The Bible said, Make a joyful noise. He didn't, he didn't worry about how it sounded. He just said, Make a joyful noise. Mm -hmm. Or oh, she can't say it, it don't matter. He said, As long as it sounds good to God, that's all that matters. I'm not worried about how it sounds to you. As long as it sounds good to God and he's getting to pray, that's all that matters. Yeah, amen. But you said, serve the Lord with gladness. In other words, that means I'm happy to serve. Boy, amen. There's a song we used to say, he said, I'm chosen to serve. Mm -hmm. He said, one day I was lost and confused. My mind used to be. Yeah. Till Jesus came and he rescued me. Boy, he gave me the great commission to share his word and to live and God tell the gospel truth to every man, woman, boy, and girl. You see, I'm chosen to serve. Boy, and because I'm chosen to serve Jesus Christ, I got a reason to praise God because yeah. he looked beyond all the magnificent faults and he saw the fact that I could use him to get my word across. I can use him to do what needs to be done. Boy. That's Go enough ahead. for me to praise. Yes. It says, come before his presence with sing. Yes. And the reason why I love this part so much, for those of you that do clean around the house, mm -hmm. you know, some, some of us don't do no cleaning. Somebody else does it for you. So mm -hmm. you ought to praise God for that because that means you ain't got to do it. Mm -hmm. But have you ever been cleaning the house 
and you just been humming a little song, and before you know it, something got all in your hand, Amen. something got all in your feet. Everybody around the house wondering what's going on. What, what, what is it? What, 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 what you doing down there? You know, and, and it's because God done crept in. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I used to think about when, when mother, grandmama would get in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be a whole lot to fix in there. I don't know about y'all, but I know about how I grew up. It wasn't a whole lot to fix in there. But Grandmama went in and made something anyway. Mm -hmm. And I never could understand why Mama was always in there making a whole lot of noise. Mm -hmm. You would hear the pots and pans rattling. You would hear Mama moaning. And you, you would wonder, what's going on? But she had her own special way Amen. of getting in touch with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen. See, some folks don't understand when you had to only eat, you know, homemade biscuits and homemade molasses and some salmon croquettes. That's all you had. Mm -hmm. Then we had, big and women, what you call wish sandwiches. Yeah. You wish you had some meat in between them two pieces of bread. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, we never went home. We never went without anything to drink. We never went without anything that we needed. Why? Because God always provides. Right. And the fact of the matter is, some of us have forgotten where God has brought us from. Right. And when you start to thinking about just where he brought you from, right. that's enough for you to get excited. I don't care if you riding down the road in yeah. your car. Yeah. I don't care if you standing at work. Yeah. I don't even care if you in the bathroom looking in the mirror. Yeah. That ought to give you enough gumption to praise God yeah. for all that he has done. Right. Verse 3 said, know ye that the Lord, Lord he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Boy. We are his people. Yeah. And the sheep of his pasture. Yes. In other words, I belong to a king. Yeah. And because I belong to a king, mm -hmm. that's enough for me to praise God about. Boy. I belong yeah. to the most high God. Boy. I belong to the president. Yeah. I belong to a king yeah. that provides everything that I need. Yeah. Boy. And we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Boy. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving mm. and into his courts with praise. Mm. Be thankful unto him mm. and bless his name. Boy. That lets me know what thanksgiving ain't once a year. Mm. Thanksgiving yeah. is yeah. every day. Yeah. Every day yeah. is a day of thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. I want to praise and thank God every day for all that he's done. Mm. Verse 5 says, For the Lord is good. Yes. good. His mercy yes. is everlasting. Boy. I love to talk about those twins. Mm. Grace and mercy. Amen. I love that because that's some stuff we should have got Amen. that we didn't get. Right. And if it wasn't for grace and mercy, a lot of us would be in trouble right now. Right. A lot of us wouldn't be sitting here right now right. if it wasn't for grace and mercy. Right. And it's true. And do it to all generations. Right. That means it doesn't just stop here. Mm. That means it goes there. Yeah. And when she gets old enough, it goes on and on and on. His blessings just keep on going. Boy. So, well, Reverend, I still don't quite understand what you're talking about. Mm. Well, if you look at Acts chapter 16, mm. just two verses, 25 and 26. Mm. We're talking about two guys that I love to talk about. Mm. Old Paul and Sai. Yes. Mm. <laughs> And if you know the story about Paul and Silas, y'all yeah. got to forgive me. I got to get a little comfortable. Huh? <laughs> but if you know the story about Paul and Silas, Boy. they were bound in that jail. Yeah. And whenever we get in trouble for some reason, we forget about who God is. Boy. When we get in trouble, we start getting worried, upset, tore up. And you know, some of us start letting all kind of words come out your mouth. You, you forget you even say when you get in trouble sometimes. <laughs> You, you think I'm lying to hit your toe on the edge of the bed and see what happens. <laughs> it ain't going to be no glory, hallelujah, no thank you, Jesus, going to come out your mouth. Mm. Paul and Silas were really in trouble. Yeah. And while they were down in that Roman jail, yeah. I really believe in my sanctified imagination yeah. that while they were standing there, Paul looked over at Silas and said, you know what, man, I believe it's time to have a little church up in here. Boy. 
He said, even though we're in the midst of trouble, that don't mean we can't praise God right now. Amen. Even though there might be people around me, that don't mean I can't Amen. give God just a Amen. little bit of praise right, right now. Right. So I really believe that, that Silas prayed a prayer and Paul started singing the song. Yeah. Right. And sometimes folks used to ask me, well, Reverend McNeil, what song do you really think in your sanctified imagination that he sung? And every now and then I take him way back to Mississippi to a little hymn that we used to say, you know, we used to sing them old Dr. Watts hymn back in the day. Well, and I used to tell them, they'd be a song say, God, religion, <laughs> and I'm satisfied. <laughs> Some folk getting a little weary, and I do understand. Come on now. You know, I ain't had good sleep since Ma since Mama left, and maybe I'll sleep good tonight when she get back. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, I got one more story I want to tell you. Y'all mm. remember when Joshua fought the battle at Jericho? Yeah. yeah. And the thing I loved about it, he followed the plan of God. Oh, yeah. Go there. And when he followed the whole plan, if you go to verse 15 and 16, mm. He said, at the seventh time, there's something I want you to do. Mm. I want you to just start praying after you've walked around seven times. Mm -hmm. When I read this story, I said, wait a minute, Lord. That's a whole lot of walking. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me you want me to show up every day and don't do nothing, mm -hmm. but just show up every day and just walk, walk. Wait. Now, don't that sound kind of strange to you? Mm -hmm. The Lord tells you to go to work every day. This co-worker cussing you out, calling you all kind of names, talking about your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your children, everything. And the only thing God wants you to do is go to work and don't say nothing. Mm. Amen. You be like, wait a minute, Lord. This getting a little rough. I'm coming in every day. This person steady poking at me. And I'm trying to be good. Amen. But after a while, Amen. you, you kind of get tired. Amen. And you want to say something back. Like, mm. And he said, hold your peace. Hold your peace. And let the Lord fight your battle. Amen. Amen. Every day they showed up and marched around. Mm -hmm. Them folks looked at them digging women like they were crazy. Mm -hmm. So what are the children of Israel doing? They just marching around. They ain't trying to fight. They ain't trying to do nothing. What's wrong with these folks? Mm -hmm. They marched around every day. And that seventh day, he said, I want you to march around seven times. But on that seventh time, I just want you to open your mouth and start praying. Boy. And if you really want to know how powerful your praise can be, Boy. read this story. Mm. When they open their mouth on that seventh time and they start praising, the wall came tumbling down. 
Stop by the tent. If you start praising God, the wall will come tumbling down. I don't care what's going on in your mind. I don't care what's going on in your heart. I don't care what's going on in your body. If you start praising God, the wall will start tumbling down. If you start giving God praise, God will start turning stuff around in your life. If you start praising God, healing will come to your body. If you start praising God, deliverance will come to your situation. If you start praising God, God will pick you up out of your circumstance Boy. and place you exactly where he wants you to be. Yeah. You just start praising God. Yeah. You just start praising God. Boy. Louis Wimbledon, mm -hmm. the clock on the wall says that's all. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. Amen. Amen. But Red McNeil got a run. Mm -hmm. See you later. Alligator. Alligator. Yeah. <laughs> After a while, crocodile. Crocodile. Yeah. Can I tell you a good old Mississippi story? Come on. Mm. And I'm gonna get out the way. Mm. There was this little boy that grew up in the projects, mm. and this little boy didn't have a whole lot of learning. Mm. Didn't have a whole lot of book knowledge. Mm. One day, his classmates they were all outside and they were talking about what they had gotten for Christmas that year. Mm. And they looked at little Johnny and they said, little Johnny, what did you get? He said, God had moved yet. Mm -hmm. They looked at him and they kept on going. And he wasn't the brightest kid in school, I told you. Mm -hmm. So when they got to graduation, some way or another, little Johnny graduated. Mm -hmm. and while they were standing there, they were talking about this, that, and the other. They asked Lil Johnny, what did you get for graduation? Lil Johnny said, God had me to get. Mm -hmm. So years later, time passed by. Everybody went their own separate ways. And they had what they call a class reunion. Mm -hmm. Everybody came back, those same men, mm -hmm. standing out front of the school, mm -hmm. talking about the wives that they married, the cars that they have, how many children they got in talked about the jobs that they worked and everything. And somebody said, hmm, where is Lil' Johnny? Somebody said, Lil' Johnny probably still living in the project. Somebody said, well, Lil' Johnny might be dead. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, then again, maybe Lil' Johnny might be locked up somewhere. And while they were standing there talking, a big black Bentley pulled up in the parking lot. Tall, strapping gentleman got out with a tailor-made suit on. Somebody looked over and hollered and said, Lil' Johnny, is that you? Lil' Johnny said, yeah, it's me. They said, well, Lil' Johnny, how is it that you got a car like that? He said, God move. <laughs> they said, Lil' Johnny, we, we know you wasn't the brightest kid in school. So what are you doing now for a job? Little Johnny said, you see that big high-rise building that you all passed coming in from the airport? Amen. Little Johnny said, that is my building. Mm -hmm. He said, my company built that building. Yeah. They said, Little Johnny, would you not be in bright? Would you not be in the smartest thing in the world? They said, how is it that you were able to get a company and have a business like that? Little Johnny looked at him and said, because God moved. <laughs> then they said, Little Johnny went over to the other side of the car and got his wife out. Everybody said, man, Little Johnny, how you get a woman like that? <laughs> so it looked like she was on on TV or something like that. Little Johnny said, yeah, she is on TV. They said, how in the world did you wind up with a wife like that? Little Johnny said, because God moved. They said, Look, Johnny, when we were growing up in school, you kept saying God had to move, and now you're saying God had moved. He said, What is it that's different all of a sudden? Look, Johnny said, The thing that is different now than what it used to be, he said, Because when you all in your house, where you grew up at, he said, Y'all had some stuff that I didn't have. 
He said, but I had something in my house that you didn't have in your house. He said, I had what you call a praying mother. And every time I came home crying about what we were dealing with and what we were going through, he said, my mama would take me in her arms and say, baby, everything is going to be all right. God just hadn't moved yet. But God has a plan and a purpose just for your life. If you just hold on and keep the faith, God will work it out for you. All you have to do is trust and believe. And so now I can look at back and say that God has moved. God bless me with my own business. God bless me with a nice car. God bless me with a nice house. Why? Because I was faithful to God and I did everything that God told me to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Johnny, Johnny grabbed his wife yeah. and walked on in the building. Mm -hmm. Humming his mama's favorite song said, You can't hurry, God. Oh, no, you just got the way. You got to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes, oh, yeah. either God, you can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He may not come when you want, oh, yeah. but he's always. On time. Yeah. And I stopped by the table because he's an on time God. Yeah. I'm gonna keep on praising him till yeah. the walls fall down. Yeah. I'm gonna keep on praising him till everything turn around. Boy. Because God is worthy yeah. to be praised. Yeah. 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 It's what I do. Boy. It's what I do. That's why I love that song so much, praying to what I do. Boy. So even when I'm going through, yeah. I learned to just give God praise. Yeah. And I tried my best to run away from that song. Mm -hmm. I lived that song for so long. Mm -hmm. Every time I said, God, I'm not gonna need this song no more. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Tired of singing this song. The Lord would always lead me right back to it. Boy. And he would always remind me of why I got you still singing this song. Boy. For those of you that don't know God. Please, this is a day for you to get to know him. Amen. And for those that already know him, but your relationship with a little rock, I promise you, he'll restore you. Amen. He will restore you. I'm a living witness that he will do it. I tried it for myself. Those are the churches over. I tried him for myself. And I know he will. And for those that are going through some things, your body is racking with pain. Your mind just ain't right sometimes. Yeah. You can give it to God. Boy. I promise you, we'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. Boy. And I know he'll work it out. Boy. You say, well, Reverend, you just understand. I'm a little nervous because there's so many people in here. I'm a little nervous to walk to that. It's all right. We'll walk with you. Boy. Amen. We'll walk with you. We'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. Boy. And God will work it out. Amen. Amen. If you ever need it.